Good morning, parents and carers. I just wanted to do a very quick update to explain where we are at the moment on our campus. I think it's clear that you will know that we've had a number of cases and I've always made it very clear that I want to be open and honest with you as parents and carers. We have had a number of cases across all year groups, as you can see on that table. I think it's important to note that a number of those cases have occurred externally to the school and have been reported as being transmission within the community with family members as opposed to taking place on site but nonetheless they've been reported to us and we have to take the action accordingly. Each of those cases then will result in a number of isolations potentially, some more than others and clearly some year groups have been impacted on that more than others, year 11 and 10 being two of those groups. I think it's really important that we also understand that those cases are you know, not dissimilar to what other schools are experiencing at this point in time. I recently had a conversation with Public Health England, who are the body who sit behind what the local authority are trying to do at the moment with reducing transmission and keeping schools safe. The lady I spoke to is a regional advisor and she made it very clear to me that we're currently not a school of concern for Leicester County Council. We're certainly not a school that has got disproportionate rates compared to other schools. She felt we were sitting broadly in the middle of their table of transmission and infection rates within schools and that they didn't feel that any further action was required at this point in time. As a school, we're in contact with Public Health England, the DfE and the local authority after every single case. We have to report those in, we have to follow the guidance, we have to go through the track and trace procedure and that's exactly what we've been doing. Each of those track and trace procedures, they take a considerable amount of time, take a considerable amount of staff effort and depending on when the case is reported to us, then that can mean that parents are finding out very late in the day and being asked to collect students very late in the day. And that's something that isn't within our control. All I would say there is I'd urge parents to let us know as soon as you know around any positive cases or contacts so that we can act accordingly and swiftly for the benefit of our community. This information was shared with me the other day and I think it really highlights to me as a head teacher but also for yourselves as parents and carers that what we're experiencing is being experienced across the county. Hinkley and Bosworth has got the second highest number of cases below Charnwood, which has the highest number. And as you'll see on those tables to the bottom left, the last two weeks have been particularly high in the number of pupils and staff who've become infected and the number of overall cases being reported. And that's reflective of what's happening in the wider community as well. Clearly, as a school, that then has an impact on us. So what we're seeing in school is a direct reflection of what's happening in the wider community and also nationally. So we have very little control over what's happening in those communities. All we can do is follow the guidance that we've been given and redu reduce transmission in school as much as possible. I think this also shows very clearly the numbers of students across the county who are isolating and so the numbers of staff and that has been our biggest challenge, the staff that are now isolating. It has a compound effect in that staff are being told to isolate for between 10 and 14 days just like you or your child may be. If that's happening every week, you can imagine it has a cumulative effect and more and more staff are then absent and we reach a critical point where we simply don't have enough site uh, staff on site to run the campus safely. Yesterday when I had to make that difficult decision with trustees to send another year group home, essentially I would have needed another additional 20 teachers today in order to fill the gaps and that just simply isn't possible. We've used all of our internal capacity, we've used staff PPAs, we've used support staff and we've also brought in agency staff but there simply aren't the agency staff available in the numbers that we would require to fill the gaps uh, sufficiently. So it is always a last call decision to send a year group home and it is something that we would seek to avoid at all costs. So please be assured we are looking at other solutions before we make those decisions and it isn't something I take lightly because I know the impact it has on your children and the impact it has on your work lives as well. Secondary heads reported as well, very similar pressures to what we're facing, that these were their biggest concerns, the staffing pressures within schools and the increased absence. 
that was really problematic for all schools who were at that meeting. The costs were spiraling out of control. And again, I know some parents have asked why we don't do X, Y, Z, why we don't buy ventilators, filtration systems, more canopies, more substantial shelters, etc. And the harsh reality is, is there has been no additional funding for any of the measures that we've put in, put in place. And we simply haven't got the funds to do that. And then again, year group and bubble closures are being reported across all the schools across the county. I think it was announced earlier this week as well that the government has clearly got the intention for schools to stay open all the way up to the published term dates and there will be no early closures. So we're working towards that plan too and we're trying to do our best to keep our school and our campus open at all times. Uh, there is meant to be some more guidance coming out from the DfE that may require us to do some follow-up actions. When that does come out, we're, again, we will share it with parents, we'll put those uh, actions into effect and we'll make sure at all times we follow the guidance that we've been given. I think it's really important for me that we continue to build the community that we have and strengthen the community because this is a challenging time. So we've really made an effort to make sure that we're doing some of those events that are really important to bring the community together and also connect with the wider community that we serve. So we had our first remembrance service uh, recently. It was really well attended by students dressed in their uniforms, representing the different services and forces. And it was a really poignant service to remember those who've fallen in both world wars and other conflicts as well. We had our post-16 open evening, which again was another fantastic event. Sadly, it was online, but students rose to the occasion. Our student leaders there did a fantastic job. They sold our post-16. It is a fantastic post-16 provision with lots of amazing things taking place. So if you are looking at post-16, I'd urge you to go onto the school website, look at what our offer is, engage in the virtual open evening. If you have any questions, please contact school and we can address those for you. We also supported mental health awareness and we put lessons within to the pastoral system. Staff obviously got dressed up within yellow and students too. And that was really important. We're seeing a significant rise in mental health and wellbeing issues. And we know we need to do our bit as a campus to address those issues. And we continue to do that moving forwards. We're looking at what counselling services we might buy into to support staff and students at what are some very challenging times within their lives. I was really touched by this. We'd obviously put shelters up outside to give students a, a nicer space to be should they wish to be outside. They were destroyed by the high winds that took place recently. I didn't expect a great deal, but the community swung into action and they raised over a thousand pounds, which were putting towards some more substantial shelters. Uh, and again, the community have been fantastic. We were donated to from a local business. We've had people offer to put up Christmas lights to come and support the staff. So really, really amazing engagement by our community. And that touched me and our school community. So thank you for all the people who donated to those. I think it's worthwhile stating that these are not where students have to sit to have their lunch. They can always go inside to be safe, dry and warm to have their lunch and their break should they wish. These are just to allow students to be outside in inclement weather uh, if they don't want to be inside. I've also been uh, able to hand out over 100 head teacher accommodations to some exceptional students who've done some amazing pieces of work. And I think it's really important that we keep encouraging our students through these times. They've produced some fantastic things. They've exemplified our core visions and values and beliefs, and they are a credit to you as parents. Uh, we have also got a new rewards policy coming and we've put an interim policy in place for the time being. That's designed to recognise students who meet our expectations, excel in all areas of school life and are valued members of our school community. We've had mocks and we know that mocks again cause significant anxiety for our year 11s, particularly those that have had to isolate. We know that there's a plan in place that isn't a perfect plan. There is no such thing as a perfect plan at the moment. We've put a plan in place that we feel is best to meet the needs of our learners. They will be supplemented with ongoing assessment. There'll be low stakes quizzing and testing. There'll be more frequent marked exam questions. And we're also putting in another exam window in March. 
So students have the opportunity to do another mock examination should they have missed this time around. So we hope in doing those different activities that we can clearly identify and diagnose where their gaps are. We can put support or therapy in place and we can retest to see if it's made a difference. And that process will repeat over the course of this term to ensure our students are in the best possible place in years 11 and 13 to do their examinations in the summer as is currently planned. I'm really keen to keep the joy alive in school uh, during these difficult times and uh, Mrs Lee there that you can see to the left and her team have raised the bar and they've made our campus look amazing. The school looks fantastic, it's been decorated everywhere, it lifts the spirits as you go around and there's a number of activities planned during form times and on the last day of term for students to have some fun in readiness for Christmas. We know that learning is important, so that will continue until that last day. There's Christmas dinners being planned, there's quizzes and other activities too, because we know that bringing the community together at the moment is also crucially important. But as always, being done in a safe fashion that's going to maintain the integrity of our bubbles. I thank you as parents for your ongoing support and understanding through these challenging times. I hope that has giving you some indication of why we've had to do what we have. If you do have any further questions, please do contact me at school. I'm always willing to talk to parents and engage with parents as much as possible. You shape what we do and shape how we can become better. And I want this school to be the best school it can possibly be. I'm going to leave you with something that was shared with me just yesterday. I think this is a fantastic video. It has a really powerful message and it might just lift your spirits too.